Alrighty. Hello. Hello. Happy full moon. Happy full moon. First full moon of 2022. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited. And I'm happy that everyone's here and that we got to get together. I think Sunday, I'm glad that, yeah, the Sunday worked out. I think Sunday seems like a good day for people sometimes. It's like a good virtual kind of day, I feel like. I agree. Yes. And I also forgot that I have yoga class with my teacher on Monday night. So I was like, wait, I want to do that. Wait, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. It worked but perfectly then. Scheduling is all messed up in my head right now, thanks to Mercury retrograde. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, let's get started. Um, yeah. Thank you all for coming, being here. I'm really excited to talk about the full moon in Cancer. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is kind of ground and ground in. And I'm going to pull a card and then we're going to talk about the full moon in Cancer and what it is, what Cancer is and what it means for us, depending on where we have Cancer in our charts. Um, there's a couple other things going on in the sky as well, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do, um, okay, if you're um, watching the recording, I'm going to tell you a few things to grab. Um, grab a blanket or like a cozy item. I literally have this like pillow that's like my. <laughs> that is the cutest thing I've ever it's seen. It's for animal. Um, so we're going to use those later. Um, but make sure you have your journal and some water or a juice or a, a tea or something. And I think that's it. I got a teddy bear. <laughs> Yay! I was like gathering your stuffed animals, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get cozy here. So, um, yeah, go ahead and find yourself in a comfortable seat. Um, feel free to lie down. Um, yeah, just get comfortable, and we're going to gently close the eyes and take a few grounding breaths. So we'll go ahead and inhale through the nose through the belly, through the chest, and hold at the top, and exhale through your mouth. <sighs> hmm. Okay, that felt good, so we're gonna do that again. <laughs> and inhale through the nose. <sighs> Sigh it out. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to pull a card here for our full moon in Cancer, the full moon during a Mercury retrograde, <laughs> right before the start of Aquarius season. So, hmm. okay, strength. <laughs> okay. We'll talk about that in a second, <laughs> that strength card. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to share my screen with you all. Oop, maybe. Bam. Nice. Okay, can you all see that? Okay, wonderful. Okay, so strength. <laughs> strength and the full moon in Cancer. Cancer is the matriarch of the zodiac, if you will. Cancer is a water sign. Um, and so we were talking earlier about how we were feeling emotional. The full moon can make us feel emotional always because it's the full moon <laughs> um lots of things happening but cancer in particular is very ruled by their emotions and cancer is ruled by the moon um so every planet has a sign associated with it um every sign has a ruling planet and the moon is cancer's ruling planet so it's a it's a big 
big full moon <laughs> for the start of the year. Um, lots of big changes happening, maybe big culminations almost of things that are happening. And yeah, so we'll dive into where that's happening for you, but that's the general vibe, uh, you guys. It's like, <laughs> it's full of emotion, but in a, um, like a loving and nurturing way. This cancer, like I said, is the matriarch. So it really has that like familial energy, um, almost like divine guidance or protection, if you will. So this is the current chart of what is happening. The moon is over here in the southeastern quadrant of the chart, if you will. So down here in Cancer, in Cancer we have the moon um, at 16 degrees. The actual point of the full moon tomorrow will be 27 degrees. Um, so that's relevant to note what degree the, this is just where it is right this moment. Um, but since the move, the, sorry, the moon moves so fast, um, by tomorrow at, it'll be 348 PST is when the moon will be at its peak fullness. Um, it will have moved 11 degrees basically. So picture it over here, but that's where it's at right now. Um, and if you have any questions at any time, feel free to just like unmute yourself and pop them out at me. Um, because I know this is kind of, this is like a lot to look at, <laughs> um, but we're, we just need to look at the moon right now. Um, and something to note um, that the sun and Pluto appear, sorry, I just said we were looking at the moon, but across from it over here. So a full moon is when the sun and the moon are directly across from each other in the chart, right? And the sun is illuminating the moon and it's conjunct which means it's right next to Pluto, see here, also at 26 degrees. They're both chilling at 26 degrees right next to each other. And this is kind of influencing this full moon's energy because Pluto is the lord of the underworld and Pluto is here to bring the unconscious to the conscious. And it makes us recognize our power and what we have power over and what we don't. <laughs> um, so that is being illuminated because it's right next to the sun. It's in the heart of the sun right now. If you were stargazing and you were, we couldn't see Pluto anyway, this is a bad example because we can't see Pluto with a regular telescope. But if you had like a super fancy telescope and could zoom in and see Pluto, you couldn't even do it right now because it's being blocked by the sun's light. So when two planets get together, they, they kind of meld energies. So that's the Pluto and the sun together, which is happening pretty much at the same time as the full moon. So that's the overview of the energy of Cancer and this full moon. And now I want to, I'm going to stop sharing. And if anybody brought their, okay, I'm back. <laughs> if anybody brought their chart and wants to talk about where they have cancer in their chart and um, any anything you want to talk about with regarding that, and I can help you find it. And yeah, so um, I wish I would have pulled my chart up. <laughs> For example, I have cancer in my ninth house, um, which is the house of, um, travel and spirituality is the house that's ruled by Sagittarius. So lots of travel, freedom, the seeker, um, education is here. And so I'm actually starting, I just started a yoga teacher training, but this is something I have wanted to do since about June of last year with, um, or excuse me, July of last year with the last cancer, um, the new moon in cancer. And so this is a loop. Um, this is a culmination of a cycle of a new moon that started in July of 2021. So yeah, but um, the ninth house is like philosophy, yoga would be here. So it makes sense that I'm like in a like starting yoga teacher training and feeling a lot of feelings about it. <laughs> basically. So yeah, let's hear. I don't know, Sierra, do you? Are you looking at your chart? I'm trying to I feel like I do this too every time. Granted, I just look at um, CoStar. 
but well okay you're lucky because i pretty much i've lived here a lot so you're leo rising so you have cancer right um before that is here um oh shoot because yeah it doesn't show up in any of my on my co-star at all yeah so cancer is um probably because you don't have any planets there uh -oh. um yeah, like it's probably an empty house for you. Mm -hmm. So Coaster doesn't show empty houses. So I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like everything you probably can't see it, but like all my signs are like they're all squeezed on one side. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so that means you have cancer in your twelfth house, basically, because Leo is your rising sign. So you have cancer in your twelfth house. So you m might not have any planets there, so it's not like activating. But the moon is passing through your twelfth house, um, which is the house of like reincarnation and um like mysticism and um like the other side um and our unconscious our subconscious is 12th house it's like the transcendent it's the house that's ruled by pisces so that type of like it's like the last stage before you reincarnate <laughs> basically right. yeah so that's the moon is passing through that area so it, it probably feels like a pretty like a refresh because the moon's about to move into your first house and like complete yeah. that cycle. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that totally makes sense. I mean, I just finished, we just finished the year of impact retreat today. So that was like the last, I know it's the new year, but that was kind of bleeding over from last year for me. So now that's like finally over and not finally, like I want it to be over, but it is over. Yeah. It's, it's been a long process and now it's kind of like my new year now since that last little bit is what is mm -hmm. now groovy nice mm -hmm. yeah so mine's in venus in 10th house cancer is in venus of 10th house cool what degree do you have um venus does it say the degrees chloe can you um, see I'm looking at two things. I have the CoStar app, and then I also have the needle chart. Yeah. Take your time. It also doesn't super matter. I was just curious to see, like, if you had Venus close to the moon. At the, um, like, and do you know yeah. Cafe Astrology? Yeah. Where is it? Like, I can't. So they have, like, a spreadsheet, but they don't have it, like, the circle. Or, oh, I see the spreadsheet. Never mind. I see the degrees now. Um. So it goes like Venus and then Cancer and then it's eight degree. Eight degrees? Zero, eight degrees, zero, four. I don't know. But yeah, there's there's two um, systems. It's kind of confusing, but we like I use the bigger one because that's 30 degrees each. Yeah. Then the system I use um, is called whole sign houses. Mm -hmm. um, so I should pull up the chart again. But basically every house is equal and every house has 30 degrees. So that's just a really easy way to do the math um, and like do see what's um, like conjunct and all the angle stuff that you need to do in astrology with the planets connecting to each other. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So 10th house cancer. Um, that's beautiful. Um, I love this place. I love the sign of cancer. I think it's like so nurturing and loving and I have my moon in cancer. So I'm, um, I have to love it or else it will ruin my life. I feel like <laughs> it's so intense. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the 10th house is your house of recognition and legacy and, uh, kind of how other people see you a little bit, but really just like what you'll be known for what you'll be successful at so it's the house that's ruled by capricorn actually so like capricorn energy here um just like getting shit done and like doing it and um and the style of cancer would be with you know your empathy and your emotions and um using those to gain success 
Basically, and with Venus here, just like adds a sweetness. I love that because it's so tender, Venus's relationships and um, also like our possessions and our artwork and like all things beauty and, you know, yummy food and everything is Venus. So in Cancer with the moon there, it's like a time to indulge yourself, I would say. <laughs> It'd be like a time by the moon going through. Oh, there's a little cat visitor outside my window. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> great okay <laughs> anyway um that's a really sweet time when the moon crosses venus um it's a time to like give yourself so much extra care and love and really just like let yourself indulge especially in cancer too um which is already into that cancer is about care <laughs> like taking care of you mm -hmm. i guess on the flip side you could um become like attached to certain mm -hmm. things, yeah. Um, with the, you know, you just want to feel like comfortable. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm in the middle of moving, so it's kind of like silly because I can't really do anything that's like that. Yeah. <laughs> like my whole house is like boxed up, so it's like I'm living on a suitcase. So. Yeah. But next weekend I'll be like in my new place, so it's kind of like I have to. I feel those vibes for sure, but yeah, mm -hmm. I can't like access, like I don't have the resources right now yeah. to like fully like, <sighs> I am able to take a bath though, so that's good. Good, good, yes. And another side of cancer is strength, obviously. <laughs> I love it. It really is so strong. Like think like the type of like motherly or just any parental, doesn't have to be mother, father, but like parental love that like protects. Cancer is so protective. I mean, it's a crab, right? Like, you mess with it, it'll pinch you. <laughs> so, like, cancers are very nice until they're not. <laughs> if you get my drift. Yeah. Do you, ever, do you have any questions, Chloe, about anything else? No, I don't think so. Well, well enjoy the, yeah, enjoy the moon going through, <laughs> hopefully. I'm not, yeah, we need to talk. We need to set up. I, I need to look at your chart and tell you <laughs> what else is happening here. And I will probably schedule that in the next week or two. So mm. once I get into my new space, so. Yes. <laughs> All right, Laura. Um, for me, my moon sign's also cancer, like yours is. Um, and I am very new to all of this. Like I've been trying to look at it for the last, I don't know, few weeks at least. Um, I have another friend who, not Ashley, but, um, a different friend who's, um, always kind of been involved in this, but, um, she lives all the way in Illinois, so we don't really see each other much. Mm -hmm. Um, but so she shared my birth chart and everything with me. And so I've been trying to understand it better. I know it says cancer is in my ninth house. And next to it, it says 27 degrees, but I don't know. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the degree that the this full moon is. Like, that is this full moon. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you said ninth house, too? That's what it's, yeah. That's what it so, says. Okay, what's your... checked Because I wanted to make sure I had accurate information because I yes. thought I was a Gemini rising, but I found out I'm actually a Scorpio. I don't know where mm -hmm. I saw that, that I was Gemini, but I'm not. <laughs> so huh. I'm Scorpio. Huh. Yeah. Me too. Oh. When's your birthday? <laughs> well, so the my birth well, my birthday is February 5th. So I'm an Aquarius okay. sun. We should have said that. I'm sorry. That's oh, my that's okay. We all should have. <laughs> I'm Sagittarius Sun. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Oh my gosh. We're like, I've never met anybody um with like the same rising and moon sign as me. So well, that's nice really special. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Right? <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, cool. Okay. So similar themes that I said. So um, the philosophy, spirituality, astrology is in this house too. So like, hey, <laughs> you time that out. Like, <laughs> not funny. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I guess welcome. <laughs> Um, I'm excited about um, hearing more about like your interest in astrology and your journey. Basically, you're you're starting a journey right now. Yeah. Um, and you know they they say full moons are are about letting go, but I feel like they can also be like 
really nice like beginnings mm -hmm. um like celebrations are always like full moon you think and that's celebrations don't always mean like endings sometimes celebrations right. like a beginning so yeah um any it's just like it feels significant like something significant is happening around full moon like big life shifts like moving or like studying something new or yeah just it shifts internal shifts even mm -hmm. like nothing external has to be happening <laughs> for a full moon shift to take place if you think about it like the moon pulls i'm gonna get a little woo-woo for a second you know but the moon pulls water off the mm -hmm. earth like the tides come in on the full moon and like we are mostly water like us beings like yeah so of course we feel this like shift or pull towards the moon around this time um so really cool to know what energies you all are feeling <laughs> thank you all for sharing so much yeah. thank you um, laura do you have questions i mean do you have other planets in your ninth house at all in cancer um, i don't know <laughs> um hold on nine I'm going to pull up my other one. Here's the picture. Hold on. Okay. I don't, this one's my picture, but I don't think that you can see it very well on there. Mm, no, it doesn't look like you yeah, do. I, I don't think I do. Yeah. If, if it's not Mars or Venus, then it's not yeah, super I significant don't. if you're just okay. learning. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, those are like the personal planets through Mars and Venus. Those are okay. like your core if you're, yeah, learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm going to pass it around if to anyone who wants to share anything else during this moon school, astro school session <laughs> um, before we move on. So, um, I could say, I guess, a little something about it. Um, being like the wolf moon, I suppose, too, with it being like the first full moon of the year. Because I used to kind of teach these as more like the seasonal archetype of the moons because I did I don't know as much about astrology. And then Morgan started getting super deep and knowledgeable about it. So it's like, oh, this is perfect. This is now, you know, your your threshold. So I'm going to let you you do it. But I I really, too, like to study the the seasonal energies of it. So this the first full moon in January is, is sometimes called the wolf moon. And with that, there's this very like strong pack energy of like family and people that are close to you and loved ones and really like nurturing those connections. And that felt very like cancery to me as well. Cause I know cancers are like all about the home and nurturing that energy. So I know, yeah, I've been feeling very like wanting to just like nest and like burrow in a way and just like wrap myself up in blankets and watch Queer Eye for three hours with my dog and just like fully indulge into that energy. So I don't know. I've, I've really liked that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I encourage you to do as much of that as possible. It is well, I'm almost so done with the season now, so I, I got to find something else. <laughs> Profoundly healing. <laughs> it is. Thank profoundly you. healing like <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah there's nothing ever wrong with just like laying down and having a good cry and the full moon in cancer is the best time to do that <laughs> in my opinion so yeah yeah thanks for sharing that sierra i agree it's the first full moon of the year in the winter time is like a, a pertinent one. And the sky is just so amazing in the wintertime too. I feel like it's almost like crisper and clearer and uh, it makes me want to have like a bonfire out in the, in the middle of the woods and like a bunch of snow, you know, to celebrate like the wolf moon. Yeah. All right. Next year, ladies, we have to. <laughs> you said, like, you said <laughs> so great. <laughs> yes. I know we should. Um, yeah. Live full moon retreats. <laughs> Let's do it. Make it happen. <laughs> All right. Cool. Any other questions? Comments? <laughs> Musings? <laughs> 
Okay, I think we're just going to go ahead and I have a, okay, I'll let the group decide. Would you rather be led through a guided meditation and then journal or do a bit of journaling right now and then do a meditation? Hmm. Do we have a, a preference? <laughs> Maybe meditation and then journal. Yeah, I think I agree with it. Okay. Cool. I like that. Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what I had written down, but I don't know. It just felt like right to ask you all in this moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can all take peak care of ourselves, right? <laughs> I'm also loving just having this little like stuffed animal nearby. Like this is so great. Pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm just so happy. I I actually ordered one when I ordered all of my books for yoga training. I ordered all books and then a squishy squishy. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to hug you <laughs> during my, <laughs> my reading breaks. I love that. It's like my support stuffed animal. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? Cancer is all about nostalgia. And, you know, as long as we don't indulge too much, we can. <laughs> I have two of those little stuffed animals, but they look just like my cats. Oh, <gasps> that's cute. They, like, I match my cats. You are winning. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Sorry, I've lost the page that I was just on. I thought I had it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess um do to do, do I guess you guys can make yourself really comfortable. Get a drink of water. <laughs> you can find it, that's okay. <laughs> wow, this is why you get oh I found it. Yay. So say this is why you get a bookmark. <laughs> is this why bookmarks were invented? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. This is a meditation written by my teacher. And I asked her if I could use it tonight. And she said, yes. <laughs> I started doing cleaning for her. She's allowing me to clean the studio and taking like lots of money off of my monthly payment. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she leads a, a Contra dance retreat in St. Croix oh. <laughs> every year. Con Contra dance. I've never, even, is, I've never heard of that. It's like, um, it's sort of like, it's like a lead dance. So it's sort of like a square dance, but it's more like islandy, like more, um, yeah, cooler than square dance, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, Laura. Okay. So please bring yourself to a comfortable place in space. Gently close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths and make any adjustments to your position or your clothing so you can relax in pure stillness. Be sure that you're nice and warm. We'll do a four part breath. So we'll do this breath together and I will count it out. 
So exhale all your air and inhale two, three, four, hold at the top, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold at the top, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Continue the count on your own. Now release the count, feel your natural breath. Feel your full awareness on the breath. You may wanna place your hand just below your belly button. Feel the gentle rise and fall of your breath. Let your breath be long, deep, and generous. Feel where your body is connected with the floor, maybe a chair. I'm going to guide you along a journey to your own inner sanctuary. Imagine now you're going to a very wonderful place. It could be a place that you've been to before that you really loved. It could be the forest, the mountains, and the meadows on an island. Or it could be some place you're coming to for the first time. Imagine yourself now in this place. You are winding along a path with bright flowers. Feel a soft earth beneath your feet. As you walk along, you are aware of the quiet rhythm of your footsteps on the soft earth. The gentle breeze blows through your hair and you can feel the sun warm on your skin. There's a scent of flowers on the wind and you hear the soft buzzing of bees in the flowers. Above you, birds are singing in the crystal clear blue sky. As you look ahead, you see a door magically appear. You walk closer to the door. Now, the door is right in front of you and you realize that the store has your name on it. You reach the doorknob and it magically opens. You walk through, and as you walk through, you see exactly the space that is most calming and relaxing for you. It could be outdoors, it could be inside, but it really just feels right. It's your space. It's this, this is a place where you feel comfortable. You come to the center of this place, and there's a fountain here. The fountain has clear, sparkling water. You allow yourself to take a long, cool drink. As you do, things feel like they're clearing inside of you. Whatever issues or concerns that you've brought to this space, 
you are now starting to get some clarity towards. This is your space to ask questions. This is your space to clarify. This is your space to be peaceful. This is your space to heal. This is your space to bring your inner child. This is your space to connect with your inner teacher, to hear the voice that is soundless. Whatever it is that you need to do now in this inner sanctuary, allow yourself the time and space right now to do it. And now, just gently following my voice, allow yourself to come back to your inner sanctuary. See again the fountain. Right now that you're here, look around again and connect with the feeling here. Ask for a symbol of this feeling inside your inner sanctuary. Allow yourself to receive the first thing that comes to you. When you have that symbol, draw it into the appropriate place in your body. Bring it to your divine self, the radiant presence of being within you. And now leave the sanctuary walking towards the door. As you open it up, you look behind you one last time, knowing exactly where it is. Walk through the door, close it behind you, see your name on the door one more time. Walk back along the path. Once again, feel the warm sun on your face, the breeze in your hair. Now gently coming back to this space in this place, bringing your awareness to your body sitting on the floor, to the room that you're in. Take several deep breaths and bring your awareness back to the room. Hmm. Now take a deep stretch with your arms up over your body, awakening and feeling even more connected. <sighs> and open your eyes when you're ready. Hmm. How are y'all doing? Good, I think my camera froze. Fabulous. Yeah, we can still hear you, but you're frozen. That's cool. I, I'm just still in the inner sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> this is my doppelganger I had. <laughs> <laughs> this is my human, my human robot form. Yeah, it only works as a voice, though. <laughs> Apparently. Okay. Um, please pull out your journals <laughs> and a writing utensil. And we are going to... Journal about strength and the strength card and what it means to be strong. Um, so I'm gonna read this. Um, this deck is the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot and I'm going to read from the book for the strength card. I highly recommend this deck. It's a beautiful, um, they're all goddesses. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but yeah. Oh, you're sorry. No. <clears throat> the artwork is incredible. It's by Lindsay Silverman. Um, yeah, so strength. Strength stands defiant, astride nature. She has mastered her environment by surrendering to it. She understands that our true inner power is a natural resource, resilient, 
or I'm sorry, reliant upon harmony, reliant upon harmony. She could crush flowers to showcase her strength or pluck them from the earth, but instead she illuminates from within to elevate them all, becoming part of the beauty of their environment. Hmm. Strength stands confident before people who wish to conquer nature, her own and the true nature of our world. Her halo, the infinity symbol, reminds us of the cycles of life. Nature is the lion which we should not tame, but rather live with in harmony. She doesn't need to place her hands upon the creature, but rather upon herself as an act of healing and intention. True strength comes from knowing ourselves and knowing that we cannot change others. Our inner light is our strongest power. Mm. So I'm gonna ask, how are you strengthening yourself? Where do you feel strength? Hmm. How can surrendering to our emotions make us stronger? Maybe not strong in the traditional sense, but hmm. So go ahead, yeah, I'm just gonna let you free write on that for a few minutes here. Um, feel free to pause the video and take as much time as you want. But we'll journal here together for a few minutes. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, we'll just another 30 seconds or so. Finish up your thoughts. And I'd love to hear what some of you all are writing, if anyone would like to share. Yeah, I will. I, I felt really like kind of called out a little bit by the whole surrendering to your emotions as a way to make you stronger because I, I'm not always the best at that. Sometimes I have a tendency to like, kind of take all my emotions internally and not want to talk about them. I don't know if that's the Scorpio in me or what, but I, and it, and it causes a lot of tension specifically between me and Steven sometimes, because then he's trying to understand, you know, like what I'm feeling and what's wrong. And I'm just like, nothing. Like, I just don't want to talk about it. Just like, leave me alone. And so sometimes I feel like if I were more open both with myself and with him sometimes about my emotions, then it gives us the ability to work through it together and makes us stronger as a unit, but that's just so, I don't know, it's so hard for me. I don't ever want to like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm afraid to be vulnerable or I just don't want to talk about it or if I don't understand them myself. I don't know, but that is something that I, I really struggle with sometimes is being vulnerable, I guess, in an emotional way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I do totally feel like a Scorpio sometimes with like this hard outer shell. And then I've just got this stinger back here and someone's like, I want to love you. And I'm like, no. Like I know. Oh, um, I yeah. I I know. Scorpio yeah. and Cancer are both, they both have the hard shells and the soft insides. And so like, yeah, with Cancer, I really, it really encourages us to be like soft and strong. Mm -hmm. Um and it's, you know, it's interesting that cancer gets this reputation of being so like emotionally because they can like cut and they can be cold. And um, I mean, anybody can. But also I think it's because cancer is like home and family and nostalgia and things that like often make us emotional, you know. Mm -hmm. So but it is so hard. Being vulnerable is is hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 To kind of like go off of that a little. Um, yeah. I think I uh, struggle. It kind of correlates with what I was writing about and the sense of strength um, and knowing that like being vulnerable and open and just transparent, like, cause we all have different, it all looks differently to everyone, how that is, you know, vulnerability or, how we communicate those are internal feelings. They all look differently, but just that in itself gives you your strength, I think. And um, so I was just writing about how I'm giving myself grace to learn and grow with my students because um, I'm trying to be vulnerable with them, but also not be like, vomit word vomit you know just like too much which i think i can do quite often um so it's like the balance between give and then pull and mm -hmm. that's really what i've been struggling with and i think i always mm -hmm. i always do um and uh trusting your ability to go through whatever life gives you and that i guess you just have to find like your own strength or faith with that, you know, because you're going through it and you're not really seeing or not really knowing what you're gaining, you know, the strength that we're referring to. Um, so I think it's hard to like know like what things I'm going to obtain through these experiences. And we're all like always analyzing, or at least I am. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are too. Um, like, okay, like, what do I need to, like, just let go of to let these, you know, downloads or these, this information, whatever it is, this hardship that I'm going through, get to me to actually learn this lesson. Mm -hmm. um, 
and so I also just wrote a little bit about like my own mental doubts and um, how those things um, aren't going to like be the determination of my strength. Um, so I think that's kind of similar to the vulnerability because you have all these like mental doubts about your own um, psyche in a sense or just like mm -hmm. where like is this rational that's usually where I come from when I'm trying to communicate my emotions mm -hmm. is this rational or am I overthinking or am I just too emotional you know I think that's a, a very common thing for empaths to say maybe I'm just too emotional or something but really just being able to like tell someone and be honest about it I think it's hard. It just takes a specific person to want to like listen to, and and I think it takes a certain mind to to like understand that too. So I, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give a little bit of, yeah, a, a little bit of love to you guys for that because it's not easy, of course. But it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. it's not easy, and the cancer really encourages us to to be vulnerable with ourselves and like take care of ourselves. So it's like the question of how or like, you know, coming back to your inner strength. And I think journaling yeah. is probably the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Before my favorite. you communicate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. So true. Thank you, Chloe. Yeah. <sighs> For some reason, my battery on my thing is not charging, and I haven't figured out why. So that's why I keep going back and forth. Because <laughs> um, apparently it's very low. But um, I was writing about some of the, um, similar to what Sierra said, but then I also, um, when you read about strength, you mentioned that um, it's knowing ourselves, but also that we can't change others. And... I kind of struggle with that because in my mind, things like this makes perfect sense and it is logical. And why wouldn't you want this to be this way and stuff? And I'm very, very different from most of my family, um, especially politically. And so um, I wrote about just being able to like, I, I feel like, you know, I want to change the world and like, how can I do all of these things? And I feel like it's a lot of weight on my shoulders. And so like, kind of being able to let some of that go and focus on the things that I can change and not necessarily changing people, but focusing on the actual actions that I can do to change things and not feeling like I have the entire world, you know, resting on my shoulders to try to change and fix and just, I don't know, there's a lot of problems, <laughs> but I can't change them personally all. So um, I think it will make me a stronger person to realize to really focus on only the things I can change. When I went through Sierra's word of the year thing, my thing is being mindful. My word is because I just wanna be more mindful of what I put in my body and what I do with my time and um, just being more focused on what I'm saying and doing. I feel like all of that's gonna make me more like stronger as a person. So. Yeah. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you all for sharing. It makes me so happy to... <laughs> Hear you say such wise things. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yeah. Cancer moon. I'm gonna tell you, girl. Cancer moons will take on everyone's problems, everyone's shit. I mean, like, I got this, y'all. <laughs> like, it is the the desire to nurture is, un like, it's wild. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Um, so we're all feeling that energy right now, like, because we're all feeling like we want to be nurtured or. Mm -hmm. Cancer will get it will cancer will nurture everybody and then freak out when nobody does anything for cancer. It's like the the hen. It's like the hen that bakes the bread, it grows the wheat and then grinds the flour and then bakes the bread and everyone wants bread and <laughs> yeah. It's except that cancer would actually give people the bread. I think the hen is like, no, this is mine, but cancer would give the bread away. <laughs> So yeah, that's like a life lesson to learn. That's a big lesson of cancer is, um, yeah, how to nurture yourself first and, you know, um, letting go of other people's, yeah, because you, you just treat people the way you'd want to be taken care of. 
yeah, and that's not how that works. <laughs> Unfortunately, all the time, just because you do something for a person doesn't mean they're going to do it back. Mm -hmm. um, that's like a hard truth to learn. That's, uh, yeah, cancer, yeah. <laughs> Knows that all too well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I feel like I had something else to say, but um, no, it's left my mind. Um, I know. I think I got a quick one. Uh, Laura, I loved how you were talking about, you know, wanting to maybe change so much uh, either in just big cultures or in just people specifically, but then kind of realizing that hard truth that you can't really like change people very much, even though we want to so bad and mm -hmm. it um, really one thing that really helped me, we were doing our, um, I think it was our mindfulness and consumption workshop with my friend Carolyn that was about um, like sober curiosity. And we're talking about, you know, being a sober curious person and maybe the people around us aren't and how you deal with that. And she said something that just like so stuck with me. She was like, yeah, you can't just shine a flashlight on people's faces and expect them to be able to see better. You have to like hold the light in front of them and lead the way so then they can actually see the path. And I was just like, holy fuck, you just like blew my mind. Yeah, that's intense. <laughs> Yeah, like you can't just like try to force people into being the way yeah. that you kind of have to like lead by example in a way. And as Steve and I were just talking about this last night, we were trying to figure out if people can actually inspire other people because really the only change that's going to come from someone is going to come from within them. You know, you can be inspirational, yeah. but no one's really going to change someone else. They have to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. So I just, I thought that was a, yeah, a really wise kind of realization on your part that I really liked. Thank you. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> it's a, a long work in progress. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so much just letting go, letting go, mm -hmm. unattach, unattach. Yeah, um, I recommend like a hobby or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like astrology. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a practice every single day, but you all are so strong, and I believe in every single one of you. <laughs> and all you out there watching, I believe in you too. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, speaking to you three, especially. <laughs> uh, okay, um, yeah, I feel like we could go on and on about this topic about strength and what is strength, and it's a great question and a great card for this full moon. Um, but I think we're at the end, so I'm gonna respect you all's time and uh, let y'all go. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, as always, hit me up. Let's <laughs> talk about your charts. Um, yeah, I just recovered from COVID. Like, I tested positive on like three days ago. Oh, so, okay. or sorry, not positive, negative. Oh, okay. I just recovered. Sorry, I went. And got, How I just, are you doing this? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I tested negative. Oh my gosh. COVID has ruined my brain. <laughs> I was really hungry. Was anyone else hung? Did anyone else here have COVID? I did. I did, but it was like way back in okay. know, February of 2020 or something. Oh, you're so. still safe. <laughs> no, I, I got it. But that was in September, so it was a Delta okay. variant. But I oh, gotcha. Yeah. It made me very hungry. Did it make any of you all hungry? Did you lose your tent, like taste or smell? Oh, okay. I did. And I was just like, all of this food is sad. I was just, yeah, that's, I was trying to eat things I loved, but it was also sad. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't think, I don't remember being excessively hungry. Cause I just, I also just got over it maybe like two weeks ago or so. And yeah, I don't remember being excessively hungry, but yeah, was, it was a really weird symptom. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Well, like, you're, sick, you're not hungry. So yeah, that is different. You know, I was sick. Yeah. I was definitely sick, but I just like couldn't eat enough. <laughs> and then I would get a fever and like, it was so weird. <laughs> I like pass out for a while then wake up and eat a bunch of food. <laughs> I was like, I need fuel. I'm like <laughs> trying to fight this. go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Well, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm glad you all are feeling better. This is like the first group of people I think I've ever been in that. Like we've, yeah, we've all had COVID. <laughs> like <laughs> crazy. Well, glad you all are okay. I'm glad you are. You're the one that's been most recent. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Sierra and I. Uh, yeah, yeah. We got it like the same time. Like yeah. It was New Year's because we New we, Year's. Yeah. We went out. We went out and had fun on New Year's. God forbid. And we got sick. 
<laughs> yeah, I was sleeping in bed. <laughs> we it. had a couple of friends over, but because nice. this one has just been so contagious that I feel like yeah. half the people I know, even if they've yeah. had it before, like they've, I don't know, we, I work in a school and like half of our, pretty much all of our admin was out and like several teachers were out the very first week we came back. So it was like mm -hmm. a rough, rough first week. <laughs> Mm -hmm. everyone was out sick yeah yeah what do you teach um i'm in the library so i don't actually teach yet i don't have the degree but i'm working on my elementary ed degree so that i can go i'm in middle school right now but i'll be teaching eventually elementary schoolers awesome where um where do you live laura i'm in indiana so it's actually oh, wow. um like well nine o'clock now yeah you <laughs> three are all in indiana i'm the odd duck oh okay yeah. You're on Pacific then. I, I assumed everyone else was on Pacific and I'm just the weirdo in Indiana. No, <laughs> no, I'm, in no. Nope, I'm in Bloomington. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in Indianapolis. Ah, I'm in Greenwood. Look at that. Right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> right, in the middle. <laughs> right? Like everyone's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sierra, I'm going to fly you out next. Oh, this would be a good time, I guess, to announce. Um, well, I'm not really announcing anything, but I'm telling you three that <laughs> that um, Jack and his friend and I are planning a festival in August in um, Spencer. And yeah, if you want to be involved in any way or like volunteer, it's an art and um, art and music festival. And we're going to have workshops, wellness workshops. And cool. yeah, yeah, lots of live That's artists cool. in, in August. <laughs> Yeah, um, they've done a couple before my partner and his friend have done like six, actually. So this will be their seventh one, I think. Um, okay. But they haven't done it in a few years. Mm -hmm. That makes cool. sense. So we'll right. right. come back better and stronger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you'll have to let us know the dates and stuff whenever you. Yeah, I will. They're like figuring out. All the... It'll be like mid-August, I think. OK. Um, Hopefully yeah. it's not the same weekend that I have the one other thing in August scheduled, but <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be unfortunate. <laughs> that, that, that would be the way it would work out potentially. <laughs> I, I, I won't put that out there. <laughs> we have a 75% uh, chance of it working out. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have a good full moon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.